Since 776, the Olympic Games have been the most important sporting event in the world. With climbing being featured as an event for the first time in the Tokyo Olympics, climbing athletes have been pushing their limits like they've never done before in order to qualify. There are some climbers you may have heard of, and some you probably have never heard of. In this series, we're going to explore who these climbers are, what it took for them to qualify, and what it will take them to win Olympic gold. My name is Albert Oak, and these are the Olympic Climbers. To kick off this series, I thought I'd talk about a climber that most of you watching probably haven't heard of, but has so much potential. Rishat Kaibulin. Rishat Kaibulin from Kazakhstan is currently 25 years old and has been climbing since he was a child, and is also the son of Renat Kaibulin, who is an accomplished mountaineer in his own right and also coaches his son. Now, let's be honest, when I talk about the country Kazakhstan, climbing isn't the first thing you think about. In fact, you probably think of this guy. I'm my name Borat. This is my country of Kazakhstan. However, because of the large size and geographical location of the country, there are plenty of mountains to climb, creating a strong environment for mountaineers and climbers alike to develop their skills. Because of his father being such a strong mountaineer, at the age of six, Rishat was introduced to sport climbing by his father. In an interview, Rishat said he actually wasn't interested in rock climbing at first, but after his first year, he won his first competition and kept on winning. Since then, in the past 19 to 20 years or so, Rishat has honed his climbing skills in not just one discipline, but has made his mark as being a strong all-around combined climber. In Kazakhstan, it's pretty common for athletes to train in all three disciplines. So Rishat, although speed climbing being his strongest suit, doesn't actually identify as a speed climber but a combined generalist climber altogether. This is a very unique trait of Rishat as many climbers going into the Olympics had to adapt to the new combined format, often learning speed climbing for the first time. But in Rishat's case, he's had experience and practice doing all three disciplines. If you pay close attention, you might have seen Rishat in another climber's videos. That's right, Adam Mantra. That's because Rishat moved to the Czech Republic for schooling where he's had great access to high-end facilities and training. Remember this because I'll talk about this later. So how did Rishat claim his spot at the Olympic Games? During the 2019 Hachiyochi World Championship combined Olympic qualifying round, he got first in speed got 17th in bouldering and 15th in lead. This put him into the finals of the combined event in 5th place, with a combined score of 255. Now I know that hearing someone getting 17 out of 20 and 15th out of 20 doesn't sound like crazy good results, but in Rishat's case, this was absolutely incredible. See, most people almost automatically assume that if you get first or second in speed, it means that you're a speed specialist and that you don't spend much time training the other two events, bouldering and lead respectively. But in Rishat's case, he not only got first in the speed round, but he was able to beat the likes of Stefano Gasalfi and Drew Ruana in the bouldering round, and not to mention beating Zhang Wanchan, Mikhail Mawem, and although it was through a technicality, even beat Adam Andra in lead. None of these names that I have mentioned are to be taken lightly, but almost all of them have had a proven track record of great bouldering and lead placements during competitions. Qualifying to the finals round in 5th place meant that he automatically qualified for the Olympic Games as during that event the top 7 climbers from a distinct country would get a ticket to the Olympic Games. Now I know this part can get a bit confusing because from that event Sean McCall qualified for the Olympics but he got 10th place and that's because Japan had Kai Harada, Meichi Narasaki, and Kokoro Fuji make it into finals. And since they are all from Japan and weren't the first place qualifier who was Tomo Narasaki, they weren't given a ticket and the torch was handed down three places to Sean McCall. But enough about how complicated the qualification process is. What matters is that in finals, Rishat, and I don't use this phrase lightly, popped off. During the speed round, he not only won the event, but went sub six seconds, 
going under six seconds is crazy fast. If you haven't seen my video about what it takes to break five seconds on the speed while possible, go check that out right now. But in it, I talk plenty about how difficult it is for athletes to go under six seconds. Okay, in bouldering, Rishat did have a tough round and ended up in eighth place, but in lead, oh my. He beat the likes of Meichi Narasaki, yes, Tomoa's younger brother, Mikhail Mawem, and even Alexander Magos. I will say though that Alex Magos did suffer an injury in the bouldering round, but beating these climbers shot him into the history books by getting a podium finish as third place right behind Tomoa Narasaki and Jakob Schubert. So we've gotten a little bit of insight on who Rishat is and how he qualified, but what will it take for him to win? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Rishat is currently in the Czech Republic training with Adam Andra. The extra year from the games being postponed can really benefit Rishat as it only means that he'll get better and better at bouldering and lead climbing. Considering he's training with one of the best in the world in both of these events, he's going to get a lot of practice. Recently, he got fourth at the Czech Republic lead national championship only behind Adam Andra, Wojtek Trojan, and Martin Stranek, a multi-world cup finalist. Not to mention, during this time, he's done several hard outdoor boulders. And at the 2020 Briançon lead cup, he got 11th place, which is absolutely incredible. But to win the Olympics, his path to gold will most likely look like this. Get first in the speed round, which he most definitely can do, then try and get a top 3 finish in both bouldering and lead to get his points down as low as possible. Remember, this scoring system is like golf. The lower the score, the better you place. His strong suit is going to be speed climbing, and because of the volatility of the combined format, getting first place in an event can seriously launch you up in the standings, and he should be aiming to secure first in speed, as that's where he most likely can get that elusive first. Now I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little partial to Rishat Kai Bolin. I think the fact that he comes from a country that no one really expects an Olympic level climber to come from gives him this sort of underdog or dark horse narrative where he has a real shot at doing really well at the Olympic Games. And also a powerful quote he said in an interview really resonated with me. And that quote is this, I have a saying, climb to the end, don't give up, fight. And I can't wait to see Rishat doing just that at the Olympic Games and in the future for any endeavors, whether they be climbing related or not. Good luck Rishat, and as always, keep crushing it. <laughs>